Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of Little Wolf Knits. This is session 35, I believe. I should have checked before I got started. But here we are. It is Wednesday, March 27th. It is gray. It is gloomy. It is cold outside. The skies literally opened up and it is pouring. I am tired and feeling a little bit loopy. But I have so much to share with you, so I knew I had to pop on. And I hope if you're stuck in gloomy weather, you too can play this video, grab something cozy to drink, and grab your whips and jump in to all the things I've done this past week. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's it. That's what I got. Anyway... <laughs> Let's get started with what I'm wearing. I'm wearing knits on knits. I feel like that happens often these days. I am always cold. And when I work in the office, it's hot. So I, I need to have lots of layers on. Now that I'm back cold, I'm putting all the home. I keep it kind of colder. In the house, I need to put all the layers back on to feel cozy. But let's talk about what I'm wearing. First, we have my not so newest anymore. I was going to say my newest FL, but that's not. Oh no, oh no. Oh, dang it. I just snagged my sweater. My bracelet. Um, anyway, this is not my newest FO anymore, but it is my newest traveler cowl. This is a pattern by Andrea Mowry that I showed last week in all of its glory. I have since blocked it and seamed it, and I love it so much. Um, I love the shape of this. I do love a big triangular shawl, but sometimes a shawl is a lot and you just want a little bit. And I'm thinking that the cowl is the new thing for me in like these transitional heading into spring times. And I'm going to need a bunch more. That's what I'm thinking. So that is what I'm wearing on top. And what I'm wearing below is my shoreline sweater. It is a really cute pattern of mine that has a saddle sleeve stock in it. Um, cap sleeves and a one by one rib throughout and this is in my custard colorway which is from the donut collection on my 420 base and it is just this creamy like yellowish neutral it definitely leans warmer into the yellows than some of my other neutrals that lean grayer or greener but I love this I wear it a lot with work and I think it matches my new cow cowl perfectly. Um, also, yes, I have blocked this, and this is proof my ends are woven in. I just didn't snip them yet. I should do it right now while I'm talking to you. But there's no scissor in this bag, so I won't, and that'll probably get forgotten about until the next time I show it on camera. Camera. And yes, in case you were wondering, I did get my hair cut. It feels so nice and short and off my neck, and I definitely needed it. So I've been loving that. And yeah, look at this. I'm all like, I actually do feel, and this is funny because I know people say they fuss with shawls a lot. I don't find that I fuss with shawls too much once they're on me. They're pretty good. Sometimes you tighten it back up if it's wrapped around but I find I'm fussing with this cowl more than I ever fuss with shawls maybe it's just because it's my hand spun and I keep wanting to touch it and squish it but that's okay I love it and I think it's cute outfit so before we jump into that newest fo I've been talking about let's talk quickly about some housekeeping fyi 
things coming up that you need to know. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it again last week, but here we are. The month doesn't technically end till Sunday, and that is when the Cozy Peaks and Cheeks Mail closes, so get your entries in. All prizes will be chosen, and things will be closed next Monday, April 1st, so make sure you get your entries in before then. The other thing that's coming up that's kind of coming to the shop, but not necessarily, it doesn't really make sense, I think, to go in the in the shop section, which there is a lot for later. But I have a pattern releasing this week on Friday, which will be tomorrow by the time you're watching this. And I was going to wear it, but honestly, I was already wearing this outfit. And I have worn this top three or four times in the last week, and it feels a little gross. So I need to just like chill with it for a second. But this one is finally, oh, finally coming out. I feel like I haven't promoted it much, but in some ways that's good news because that means you don't have to wait that long to buy it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, I'm sorry, I haven't promoted it that much, but it is my Central Ab Cabled Crop and I'll throw it on, I'll take this off again and throw it on. I don't know how it's gonna look with this, but it is this cropped oversized boxy cabled layering piece with a little bit of a funnel neck. I don't know if that's what this is called, like a wider neck that stands up a little bit. It's not quite a mock, um, but you saw this before I added length to it and I have since ripped it out, added length, so it has really deep armholes because again, it is meant for layering. So super cute, I like to layer it over, I mean, this is actually kind of cute. I like to layer it over like a fitted long sleeve or a really loose blousey button up. That's why I wore it this past week a few times. And I love it. This sample is in my chocolate almond butter balls. The other sample that I had that you would have seen that was the dark, chocolatey brown color and my classic colorway has been gifted to my sister. She loves it and I know she's going to wear the heck out of it. But this one is coming Friday. So if you're interested, make sure to keep an eye on my Instagram and subscribe to my newsletter if you're not already so you can be the first to hear all about it and get a little coupon code. And I will say I have been mindful to try and keep multiple skein quantities of 420 in my shop for things like this. There are also a lot of fingering weight skeins and Surrey that could be held double that I think would be beautiful. But I've been, oops, I've been stocking the shop. So check out the ready to ship section. Um, like I said, 420 or fingering weight and either my cloud or buoy base, like a mohair or a surrey held together would be perfect for this, like in that transitional period. Um, I've had testers who've done both and I know they all look amazing. So keep an eye out and get ready for this one. Now for the second time, I'm gonna throw my cowl back on and then let's talk about what I finished this week. <laughs> Yeah, like I have been so proud of myself lately for getting FOs done and like it feels like I'm cranking them out but it doesn't feel like I'm cranking it out you know what I mean like I'm not like I gotta knit this I gotta get it done I just happen to be finishing things that I'm really excited about and I can't stop working on them so they keep getting done and it feels so good the first one that I'll talk about was Almost done last week, when you saw it, I took my progress keeper out because I ended up blocking it, weaving in all the ends. I haven't snipped them yet, but I promise they're woven in. Um, but I was down here. You can see where I joined a third skein. This one had little pops of orange that if I knew from the beginning, honestly, I'm lying. I was gonna say I would have knit them helically. I wouldn't have. I don't think I would have done that. Maybe I would have blended it in at the end, but 
I didn't know what I was going to do with the length. I love it. And I am so excited. I am going to finally tell you all the details of this sweater. So this is my second ass sweatshirt by me. It came out in February. This is now my third one. I wear these nonstop and I cannot wait to wear this. This is going to be my outfit tomorrow. Now that I know I don't have to worry about getting it dirty. Um, and it's all blocked and off the mats. So these colorways, one of them you've known, the other you haven't, but some of you guessed the colorway on Instagram and YouTube over the last few weeks. This is part of a new collection that I have coming up, May to April, that is going to be, drum roll please, cereal. Like cold cereal. This is gonna be a cold cereal collection and I am so excited. I think I'm gonna call it the cereal box collection um, cause that feels cute. Although not all the colorways are based off the boxes, but the inspiration is cereal. I am so excited. So, so, so excited. Um, and this colorway, as some of you guessed, is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It's so perfectly Cinnamon Toast Crunch to me. I love this one. I love a lot of colorways from this upcoming collection, but I really, really love this one. And it's coordinating tonal that again, you've seen before is cinnamon sugar. This was originally from the cookie collection and was a tonal that I paired with Snickerdoodle, which feels very fitting because I feel like Cinnamon Toast Crunch are the Snickerdoodles of cereals, right? Um, and Cinnamon Sugar is definitely on Cinnamon Toast Crunch. So it is a perfect, perfect fit. I ended up going full length a little bit shorter, about an inch, maybe an inch and a half shorter than my other full length, which is pretty long, um, and long sleeves. So this one will hit just the top of my waistband, and I think it's perfect. I am so, so excited to have this off the needles. It went fairly quickly, so it's not like it was a slog by any means. I think I finished it in a week and a half. Um, but I'm excited to have it off the needles because I've been wanting to wear it since the day I cast it on. Honestly, since before I cast it on, I wanted to wear it. This is also not how I fold my sweaters, but I don't know why apparently I keep doing it on here. So love this. That is my first FO and it is not my only FO. I have one other FO and no, it's not knitting. It's spinning and I've decided it's an FO. So if you don't agree with me, that's okay. You can make your own podcast and do whatever you want to do. But this is an FO that is not a completely finished project, but it is a finished part of that project. So you would have seen a few weeks ago, I spun up a single ply on a bobbin of my Nest Fiber Co. Hello Sunshine. Well, this week I finished one of the braids that I'm going to ply with this, this is Malabrigo Noob Arco Iris, and this is Superwash Merino. This is a Superwash Flax, or Merino Flax Silk. I don't know if it's Superwash, honestly. And this one is just Superwash Merino, and it's so fun. I'm super excited, and I cannot wait. Cannot wait. I think as soon as this episode is over, I'm going to prep this braid, which is, again, Malabrigo Noob, and this one is called Diana. And that's going to be a really fun third ply for that spin. And I cannot wait to have this spun, and I cannot wait to have that plied, and then decide what I'm going to do with it. I've never done a three ply. That wasn't a chain ply, so I'm really nervous. I don't wanna get ahead of myself and make plans that might not work out, you know, before I actually see the yarn and see the weight of the yarn, the yardage I have, and what it looks like. But I'm really, really excited about that. And those are the things I've finished and something I have planned. Um, so let's hop into 
what I've been working on. Yeah, let's do that. I only have one whip this week and it is the only thing I've worked on. Is that true? I think I recorded this last, yeah, that must be true. I recorded this last Tuesday or Wednesday. I finished this sweater and then I cast this on maybe Wednesday or Thursday. And I'll talk about my weekend a little bit with life stuff, but I didn't get that much knitting time. Um, so I'm looking forward to the next few days here where hopefully I will get a bit more knitting time in this project. We'll get a little bit more love. So this is a newish bag. I think I showed it in acquisitions and when I had project plans the last two weeks. This is from Songbird Handmade and this is her medium drawstring bag, which is wild. It's huge, um, but I love this fabric. I love this guy so much. And I love the peacock, this peacock, and I love the deer. Like, I don't know. I just love it. But inside of it, I have something that I've been working on with another colorway that I can finally tell you about. So this is another colorway from the cereal collection. And this one was inspired by Life Cereal. And it's called He Likes It. Because Mikey likes it. Um, we're going to play around with Michael likes it. Right? Like Mikey. Um, but then I didn't know if people would get it. So, I don't know. I guess drop your I drop your thoughts below. Do you like he likes it or do you like Michael likes it? Um, but it is a really cool like tans and browns and then teal with pops of teal. And I am working on another low tide tee. I keep saying I'm going to show it to y'all. And I will. It's right there actually. So I'll show it to you. I guess I'll show it to you now. Hold on. Well, this is a garment I haven't shown fully. I think outside of my Instagram stories and my wolf pack. I finished it last fall, maybe in September or October. No, maybe August or September. And then by the time it would have tested, it would have been like October. Felt too late for a t-shirt, but it is such an amazing design. I have not worn this for a year because I didn't want to ruin it and like mess up what I had done. Now I'm making a second sample. I cannot wait. I need to start wearing these now that the weather is warming up. But this is my low tide tee and it is this really adorable bottom up boxy sweater that has these ties on the side. Let me show you. I believe I have all of my ends woven in. I just never snipped, snipped them. I should double check that. Yeah, it looks like it. So I should just snip these, get them out of the way. But I will show you what it looks like. Um, so there are these ties on the side that you can leave loose and tie, or you can cinch and tie and get a really cute look. Either way is awesome. Then there's some um, like double knitting, a flat I cord here. That's, I think the same as double knitting um, for the edging, for the sleeves, the collar, and that's it. And then this tube at the bottom. And I love it so much. This is in my cinnamon sugar colorway on my sunfish base. And I knew I needed a second sample and I'm in the process of getting this ready to send to testers. And honestly, <laughs> I think it's already full for my wolf pack. Um, this is a really exciting one, but this is the first sample. So this is the second sample. It will be that. I am still in the very early beginning stages. Um, and it has this little tube at the bottom that you put your eye cord through and then you knit straight for the body. This is curling up here. Um, I actually knit a fair amount of inches yesterday. I worked on this in the movies 
Let me see where that progress keeper is. Uh -uh. Oh, here it is. I was like, I thought I had one in. Yeah, I got a good amount done. So this is where I was at the beginning of yesterday. Um, so I got a few inches done and I would love to get the body done on this today or tomorrow if I don't finish it today and separate for the front and back. I'm really excited about it. And this is my laser base, which is my single ply fingering weight base. I just thought it'd be really fun and drapey for this gauge and this oversized boxy feel. This has about 10 inches of positive ease, as does this one. And I just, I don't know, I love the fit, I love the look. This isn't actually a color that I typically wear with jeans. I've been wearing a lot of light jeans lately, although I love it with dark jeans and I love it with this like tan camel. And y'all know how much I wear tan camel pants, shorts, dresses, jumpsuits. So it's going to be a really, really good top for that. And I already have about six more of these planned because they're just a classic staple, like a classic t-shirt from a store. That's what I feel this fills in my knitting wardrobe. And I love my twisted t-shirt. Don't get me wrong. I feel like that's the other staple. It just has a little bit of a different look to me. And I love them. I could fill my entire closet of just those two things, but that's what I'm working on solely and exclusively. And I cannot wait. Once I'm done with this, a testing call will be going out to my wolf pack before I finish this sample, hopefully tomorrow. And then I have another project lined up that I showed you in another cereal yarn, which I guess should we just talk about that now? Let's just talk about cereal yarns, y'all. Let's talk about what is coming in the shop. We are still working on finalizing names. I have ideas for most of the names here. Um, but if you have ideas, if you have names that you really like that I mentioned, please feel free to drop them below and make me feel better. Um, I will say we have every colorway that's gonna be the collection in the collection, except one. I have like a misfit of one that I'll show you just for the sake of showing you, giving you an idea. But we will have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, Six variegated and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tonals. Is that right? I guess we'll see as we go through them. Oh, here, seven. Saren, it's seven variegated. Okay, first we'll start with one of my favorites and the one I've shown already Cinnamon Toast Crunch. This one. Oh man, I need to reference my poem because now I um, don't remember anything. So this one, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember what it was, but Cinnamon Toast Crunch and Cinnamon Sugar. Those two will be two of the colorways that are in this collection that I'm very, very excited about. We also have one colorway. So if y'all know how I do my collections, I typically have an Easter egg in a previous collection. So in my cookie collection, I had a Lucky Charm cookie. So in my cereal co collection, I'm bringing back Lucky Charms, which is this really cute layers of tan, brown, this like golden, fawny sort of colors and bright pops of the chartreuse, aqua, orangey, and pink to represent all of the charms in Lucky Charms. So this one is gonna be Lucky Charm Cookie because it already has a name. And then this, ooh, it's very blue, is the Misfit. So you'll see this one has speckles because I ended up speckling it. 
of this coordinating tonal. So this aqua blue tonal, imagine this is a tonal, is blue moons, which is the tonal for Lucky Charms. It is so cute together. So we have those two colorways. Then we have some, y'all know, I love my browns, I love my neutrals, but I gotta keep it fun. And this is, I think, my one of my favorite colorways um, because I think it's the cereal that people will be least excited about, but I love it. I love this cereal. I know it's like a stereotypical old person cereal. It's not like sweet and sugary, although it is so much. This is Raisin Bran. And I love it. It has these like tans and goldens and this deep like plummy purpley brown and lots of plum speckles for all of the raisiny goodness. Again, I'm, I'm just not going to share names here. And this is its coordinating tonal, which is meant to represent a raisin. It's like this purpley plummy black. And it's so, so good. I keep dreaming about this in a central lab cabled crop for myself. And I'm like, yeah, that's really good. So, and we have one, two, three pairs. I'll keep you with another neutral we have here. I think this one is fun. Um, this is Reese's Puffs. It has a mix of dark, browns, tans, and orange pops, that bright orange box. Um, and this goes really well with cinnamon sugar. It goes with raisin. Um, it also goes really well with classic. So classic will be listed as part of this collection, that deep, deep chocolate that I don't have a skein of with me here. It's so good. Um, okay, then, you know, I gotta keep my bright lovers in the mix here. Oh, I'll also share because I think this is a good one for a lot of the colorways, but one of the tonals is Silver Spoon. It's like a mid-tone gray silver. It's darker than fog, lighter than chamber. Um, and I think it fills a nice hole in my tonal lineup. And it goes also really well with Cinnamon Toast Crunch because it has that, those silver pops in it. So another additional tonal, like imagine a three color project with that. That would be so fun. So Silver Spoon for sure. Then moving into my color lovers here. Oh, I already showed you. This is He Likes It or Michael Likes It. Let me know what you think. Um, on my laser base that you've already seen. And now, yeah, let's go this direction. We have Apple Jacks. Look how fun. Oh man, the lighting is so bad right now. Um, there's like these greens, these peaches, these pops of, the cereal has like these little specks on it almost. Um, that are darker than the cereal itself. And I think this is such a perfect colorway. It's also like perfect for spring and summer and something soft, but still colorful. Like it's still a good color. It's not neutral, but it feels soft and springy and sunny and I love it. So this is Apple Jacks and it's coordinating tonal. This could actually go with a lot of them, but this is green apple. Oh man, is it coming up? Green apple, all of these cereals have some sort of like apple. A lot of them have green apples on the box and this is the perfect chartreuse green mix. There's Michael's car, can you hear it? So, super excited about these. Then, the craziest colorway of the bunch. You've seen this wound up and it is even more beautiful in a skein. This is 
you guessed it, Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops, in case you can see, is that the tagline? I think so. Um, and it's just so punchy and colorful and it's a perfect summer colorway, at least for me. I know other people wear colors like this year round, but I love this one and think that green apple would be so, so perfect with this colorway as well. And then, oh, this is also, oh my goodness, should have organized this. Cereal milk, the like palest, palest, reddy brown to go with Reese's Puffs. Michael, yes. come say hi to the people. Um, so cereal milk is a perfect tonal for those. Come, come sit and talk to them about cereal yarn. I gotta go work out. I couldn't get up this morning, so I'm gonna work out now. <laughs> okay. Well, then I was sitting here and I was like, man, I think my pink lovers are gonna be sad. Yes, we have Fruit Loops. And yes, we have Apple Jacks. But I think there's a hole in the pink in this collection. And so I had to fill it. And this is Special K with strawberries or red berries, depending on where you are in the world. I actually really love this colorway. Don't you like it, Michael? It's like it. not wet. I love it. It's not my typical palette, but I love the pink in it. And I love the tans. Um, I, I just really, really like this one. So it has de depths of pink and a pink speckle and then all these tans and browns and golds and it's beautiful. And we have another tonal that is a really, oh, it's coming up actually pretty good. It's a pink, a soft pink with purple undertones. This one is strawberry milk. And it's so fun and soft, soft contrast to this one. And I think it goes really well. Huh. I don't know if I would do that. Yeah, I guess it's really pretty and soft. Um, but I think you can go either direction. I like that. Uh, Michael, okay, before you work out, just come look at the cereal colorways and tell the people your favorite colorway from this upcoming collection. And then you have to tell them why it's your favorite. There's some more under here. Mm -hmm. Where are Reese's Puffs? Mm. And the Cinnamon Toast Crunch is mm. right there. Mm -hmm. Is Raisin Bran? Yeah. Yeah, I like Raisin Bran. Is that your favorite? Yeah. Why do you like it? I don't know, it's just got a bunch of cool colors. Okay. Michael said it here first. I also really like Reese's Puffs and Reese's Puffs. Puffs. Reese's Puffs. You could fade these together. Um, like do you like the tonal? Did you see this for reason? Yeah, very good. So, okay. Michael has spoken. Let's see if the people will support you and vote. No, don't support me. Think for yourself. Be original. <laughs> Uh, but those are all. Oh, you gotta do that. People are gonna. You got. I'm people sorry. are gonna hate I got, it. I got it. I understand. I didn't mean to do. It. I did. I did mean to do. <laughs> those are all the colors for the cereal collection coming mid April. I will say more about it in the coming weeks. But if you want to see certain colorways, if you want to see um, colorway pairings, maybe on a day where the light is a bit better than today. Drop your stuff below, send me an email at littlewolfnits at gmail.com or comment in any of the posts on Instagram and I will make sure to get photos of those. You'll see them in a lot of samples. Like I said, I have this second half sweatshirt sample. I have this low tide tee that's coming. I have a new tank top design in Fruit Loops and I already have designs for most of the colorways in this collection, including this one, I think. So super excited for all of those and super excited to see what y'all think about those. I think that's all of what's coming in the shop. So maybe let's talk for a minute about life stuff. So last 
week we talked to you on, it must have been Wednesday because we had already watched the sad, tragic movie and I know I talked about that. So Wednesday, I think I had a knit night with my wolf pack. I did. That was really fun. We hung out. Thursday, Michael and I watched Game of Thrones potentially. Friday, man, what an adventure on Friday. It was one of the worst days I've had in a really long time. And if you watched last week, you would have heard all about the Verizon debacle. But I had some stuff to do in the morning and then I was kind of putzing around until I had to drive to a global entry interview at three o'clock. I drive, get all the way there, realize my interview is at two o'clock, not three o'clock. So I miss it, I'm very upset. I go run all the other errands I had to run all around the world, different malls, different stores, get back home and realize I lost my passport, which I had with me at the airport. So now I'm freaking out, I'm crying, I'm panicking, I'm going through all my stuff. My mom is, comes home, she's helping me go through all my stuff. I'm calling every store that I went to, Starbucks, at every single store. No one sees passport, no one sees passport. Trying to call the airport, call Port Authority. They kick me to Customs. Custom kicks me to TSA. Like, I am bounced around to 8 million people. There's like, yeah, there's really nothing you could do. You could leave a voicemail. Crying. Tears, sobbing. I lost my passport. What a mess. Eventually, after like two hours at the airport, we had one incredible Customs worker who came out and was talking to me about the process and what would happen. And if you lose it in certain parts of the airport, it goes to TSA use it in other parts it could go to customs if you lose it outside it could go to port authority but basically it really depends less on where it was found and more on where the person turned it in so i'm going through this whole thing i give up hope i'm like ma wait, wait, let's just leave my mom had come with me like, let's just leave i'm not gonna find it this is crushing me let's just call it she keeps going i think you're gonna find it i think you're gonna find it i'm like I really don't think so. Let's just go. We get in the car to drive back to her house. And she's in like a gated community. She has a security like office. What what is that called? A guardhouse? Yeah. Um, and we get a call from the security person on duty saying, Your daughter is gonna be so happy. I lost it. I was like, Did you find my passport? Someone found my passport and turned it in. In the two seconds between bringing my stuff inside and then going back out to check where I thought I dropped it, someone must have walked by and picked it up. So I, I, it was a mess. It was like hours of crying and being all over the place. And we had dinner plans for Sophia for her 30th birthday with my dad that we were then very late to. So it was a lot of emotions. I was a mess. Got no knitting done that day was the point of the story. Then we hung out, had dinner. I feel like I still was like all anxious. I had so much adrenaline. Saturday, we woke up. I got my hair cut. We had some errands to run. And then we hung out for a little bit, relaxed a little bit until Saturday night where we went out for Sophia's birthday with like 40 of her friends. It was so much fun. Um, I think she had an amazing night, which was perfect um yeah and it, it was perfect it was really really fun the funniest part is she is only she is like the biggest birthday planner she will buy you sashes and a birthday pin and a headband and a sign and balloons and we were like we have to get stuff for Sophia we have to this is what she does this is what she cares about so I was like okay I'll order a sash I'll order a tiara we have I'll get these giant like 30 like the number three zero balloons. My mom got a balloon with her face on it. It was like, we got all of this stuff. We get to the place in Hoboken and we realize, I actually didn't realize till Sunday, we didn't bring the sash or the tiara headband thing. So she was fine. Like she didn't care about it. She didn't know it. The balloons were great. But the next day I told her and she was like, oh, I can't believe you forgot that. I'm like, I know. And we had it, like we ordered it. We went through all the trouble. So it was fine. It ended up being fine. She had lots of fun. Um, I ended up not drinking and drove everyone home because my mom ended up drinking along with everyone else and had a lot of fun. Uh, and it was really fun just to be a bystander 
in all of that. Um, and then Sunday we woke up late, <laughs> hung out, and we just did like Sunday dinner, like macaroni and meatballs and sauce um, with my family, with Nanny and my uncle and aunt and cousin, and hung out, and it was really fun. And then we headed back to Pennsylvania later that night. Monday, I worked a lot. I got a lot of dyeing done. There's some really cool things happening. I got almost every single order except maybe one or two that have been placed for the Cloudscape sweater scarf, either pearlescent or a desert bloom out the door on Monday. Again, I still have a few, a few skeins to dye and wrap up some orders, but that means if you order now, they'll likely go out before ne the end of next week, which is when the pattern releases. So you could have your yarn pretty much by the time you get your pattern. And I feel so excited about that. My ovens have also just been full of March clubs and some collaboration, cereal yarn, all really fun things. But man, I've been working and it has been fun. So we did that on Monday and then maybe watch some Game of Thrones. I feel like we didn't. We didn't, we didn't. I started watching, oh man, Quiet On Set, which is a docu-series about basically the child abuse and um, toxic environments that went on in on Nickelodeon specifically, but kids television in the 90s. It's rough to watch. I don't think it's a surprise. I think if you're surprised by this, I'm kind of like, where have you been? Have you heard about Hollywood? Um, but still hard to watch and really sad. And yeah, so I watched that on Monday night. Michael was like, I don't want to watch it and played some video games and then came up and like kept watching it with me. And then yesterday I had a really full day with clients and then we went to see Love Lies Bleeding, which is an A24 film. It was very good. I liked it. Michael, did you like it? Good movie yesterday? Yeah. Um, I agree. I felt that. I felt the same way you felt. <clears throat> like I was feeling it like part of the way through the movie. You just kind of like, man, it feels like there's like, um, they weren't diving enough into the story. They were giving you like a character. surface level story for a bunch of their backstory and just kind of making you fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. And it was fine. It, it made the story move along, mm -hmm. but they could have added so much more depth to what you were seeing. So it was just this like surface level, like you see is what you get kind of thing. Um, but not really, because it was like, yeah, you had to fill in the blanks. And I wonder if they yeah. did it on purpose to be like, I, it kept, you it probably need kept to the movie come up. Shorter. Yeah, but like you need to come up with what happened to her yes but all, I, I don't uh yeah i get it i get it it was a good movie i enjoyed it um i don't know i probably give it like a three out of five he has a very bad rating scale go or no it's you good go. it's a good rating scale three out of five means it's a good movie no three out, out of five means like... above average good movie five out of five is like okay on my ever. scale i think it's a four it was good your scale is skewed <laughs> Nonsense. He gives things a one out of five, and he's like, that means it's okay. No, no. that's not true. <laughs> okay, that's what we did yesterday. Today I was at work, and we have plans this afternoon, so we need to get going. It's not really getting going, and I need to get knitting. And I will talk to you all next time, and I can't wait to hear what you think of the next collection my cereal box collection cereal box cereal bowl cereal i don't know let me know okay until next time bye